Hello and welcome. Good morning to the Americas, good afternoon to Europe, and good evening to Asia and the Pacific. My name is Andrew Gaylor, and I am the Weapons Team Manager for James Aerospace Defence and Security, and it is my great pleasure to welcome you to this online intelligence briefing. The James Intelligence Briefing Programme will consist of approximately 40 events during 2017 and is available to all customers of James Intelligence Centre and Module Products, including the market, market forecast products. Today we are joined by Charles Forrester, who is a Senior Defence Industry Analyst from James Industry and Market, and Ben Goodlad, the Principal Weapons Analyst and Lead Forecasting Analyst for the Weapons Portfolio. Together they will present a session entitled Missiles in the Gulf an examination of the 2017 to 2026 missile and precision guided weapon market. Following on from the recent International Defence Expo and Conference in Abu Dhabi, there's been some interesting procurement activity announced by countries in the region as a whole, and look, today we're going to look at some of the drives of that activity, what's being procured, and highlight any trends that, that can be identified from that. I would like to highlight the information used today to compile today's presentation has been drawn from a variety of Jane's content, but particularly Jane's Defence Industry and Markets Intelligence. Further details about this product can be found by following the links which you can see on your screen now. Now, over to Charles to look at missiles in the Gulf. Many thanks for that, Andrew. I'm going to be starting off by uh, looking at some of the defence expenditure trends uh, in the region, uh, which has been a, a major interest for a lot of our, our listeners in the past. So we're just going to start off by looking at the, the energy sector dependence uh, in the region. So low energy prices had a major impact on this. So I'm, I'm not going to spend too much time going through this uh, as we've done this in the past. And the chart on the left here shows the 16 countries um, with the highest economic dependence on the energy sector as of 2015. Now, as you can see from this, uh, four of the five most exposed and six of the ten most exposed are Gulf states. So that collapse in oil prices, which you can see on the, the right-hand chart, uh, is where we saw the price drop from $100 a barrel in 2014 to below $30 in early 2016. And this has had a really hugely disproportionate effect on the region that we're looking at today. So this is really the economic background to the trends that uh, we've seen in defence spending since 2014. And it will continue to influence um, how countries um, spend their, their defence budgets or allocate their defence budgets into the foreseeable future. So, and that's you know this is why we saw the Gulf region go from being one of the fastest growth markets uh, in the world uh, between 2012 and 2014 uh, when oil prices were high, uh, to a region where we saw defence spending fall by nearly three percent uh, in 2016 to a US uh, 92 billion dollars US. And that's the first cut in defence spending we've really seen since 2008. Um, but the other crucial point is that the fragile security environment in the region has seen defence spending protected. Um, cuts have not been on the same scale as the correction in the oil price. So one, one bellwether here is, is uh, arms sales notifications uh, from the US Department of uh, Security Cooperation. Um, so what impacts have all these factors had on defence procurement. And hopefully the next two slides will shed some light on this. The chart here shows the number of arms sales to the Gulf states that Congress has been notified of since 2009. And I think we can see that there's a downward trend here since the collapse of oil prices in mid-2014. The overall black line is, is the oil price. As we heard from Charles, whilst the economies of the GCC have been affected by the foreign oil prices, procurement has remained relatively protected using off-budget funding. The reason for this is twofold. Firstly, competition for influence in the region, and secondly, the threat from Iran. First, let's look at regional influence. Here you can see a map put together by a country risk team showing competing influences in the region. As you can see, Saudi Arabia, Iran, and the UAE are exerting influence in Syria, with Iran and Saudi Arabia also active in Iraq. Saudi Arabia, UAE and Qatar are also reported to have supplied weapons to Syrian rebel fighters, for example. All three countries have been involved in coalition airstrikes against the Islamic State. To the south in Yemen, Iran and Saudi Arabia are battling for influence with Iran arming Houthi rebels, while Saudi Arabia has been actively involved in supporting the government. Neighbouring Amman has also influenced in the east of the Yemen region. The overall result is that interventions have increased, creating increased demand for air-launched weapons. 
Gulf countries are also supplying ground-based equipment, such as anti-tank missiles, from their own inventories. This will require replacement, and we will see the, we've already seen efforts in this direction, which I will examine later in the briefing. The other key driver of procurement in the GCC region is the threat from Iran, both in terms of naval power and ballistic increased missiles. Across the Gulf, Iran has the ability to strike the GCC nations using its inventories of short to medium range ballistic missiles and cruise missiles. Given the close proximity of the GCC states to Iran, the main threat is from cruise missiles and short range ballistic missiles. Here we see a heat map showing how this value is distributed across the region, with the dark countries indicating a higher market. Much of the market value is taken up by three main countries. Saudi Arabia with 15.2 billion US dollars, UAE with 6.6 billion US dollars, boosted by recent announcements in IDEX, and Qatar with a 10 year market value of 3.3 billion US dollars. For each country in the GCC, I'm going to highlight a key weapon that either has been or is being procured. For Saudi Arabia, I've chosen MBDA's Meteor missile. Meteor is a ramjet powered air-to-air -air missile with a maximum range of over 100 kilometers. Supplied by MBDA, the missile features an inertial navigation system and secondary data linked mid-course guidance, combined with an active radar seeker for terminal guidance. Unlike the other countries in the GCC, Iraq is still attempting to rebuild its conventional warfare assets following the 2003 Iraq war and the subsequent insurgency campaign. Since 2003, its main focus has been on counterinsurgency operations, most recently against Islamic State. Priority has there before been given to weapons used in this type of conflict. Iraq's largest missile procurement in recent years has been for the AGM-114 Hellfire missile, with 5,000 units requested by FMS in January 2016. Thanks, Ben. Thanks, Charles. Um, Right, so summarising sort of uh, what is a, a huge amount of detail that you've, you've covered there, the, the big factors that appear to be influencing procurement in the region, Iran is clearly one of the sort of the, the, the driver. Um, it, indeed, we've actually seen even in the last week activity by the Iranian Navy uh, interposing itself between US and uh, UK naval vessels which were patrolling in the Gulf. Uh, we also saw a test fire of a FATA 110 short-range ballistic missile following on from a medium-range ballistic missile test that they carried out in February. Then this is combined with a fall in oil prices that appears to have influenced the spending plans of some of the largest participants. Clearly some countries have been very active and that spending has been to update their forces. Uh, once complete, that will see their procurements fall back again. That concludes the seminar. Uh, thank you for joining us today for this event. We look forward to welcoming you to future online intelligence briefings, and our next briefing will be the military ground vehicle market, and that takes place on Thursday the 30th of March at 1500 in the UK, 10 o'clock in the US Eastern, and we look forward to welcoming you to that. In the meantime, thank you again for attending, and goodbye.